How are you? I'm good. Have I'm you been good. doing a lot of these? Yeah, uh, yeah I, I've actually done more <coughs> cons uh, outside the States mm. than inside the States. Um, I, because I'm still working a lot, I don't like to take a lot of time. It's going to blow up. <laughs> Should you choose to accept it's, this mission? It's beeping. It really. You're taking a picture of it. I think that's my memory. <laughs> yeah, that one's that was, that was actually, and you can tell the two Americans because our brains first went to bomb. Bomb, <laughs> like that. <laughs> oh shit, it's going to blow. It's going to blow. It's going to go, all right. Um, now, okay, question for you. Sure. Yeah. But, oh, we, we've now, got, do you know oh, who the hell I am? I do, yeah. Or why I'm here. <laughs> I do, yeah. I'm, we've, I'm actually. Followed. I mean, the, your name really came into light when because uh, I've done some since with Disney back in the past. So with the um, you kind of recently, well, October recently popped into like the Pixar and Disney for background voices and stuff. I've like done that. a lot of stuff um, since uh, Bugs Life. Yeah, and that's where the name first popped up for me because I have oh, gotcha. a thing for I think that sounds creepy. I have a like a, a, a mental tick for people with voices. Gotcha. Um, it's something I've always found the most fascinating of being able to. Get an emotion from a voice without having to. I mean, you. The best thing I find is watching behind the scenes things of people actually doing voiceover work, right? And watching their face, and then you compare that to the character. And with most animation, uh, like sort of stock flight animation, it's just the, the lips moving. But when you see the, the newer CGI, you can actually see the, the facial articulation of an individual, right? In the character as well, and I find that just. Uh, for some reason, I find that exceptionally fascinating. The fun thing about it is a, a, a lot, it's happening more and more where they, you know, I, I did a, a thing recently where they did, they had 3D cameras yeah. setting on, on, the, um, on the, the, the stand, on the music stand. Lots of light, but they're shooting me from different directions because of, of that reason. Um, they were going to animate to my face, yeah. you know. Um, and sometimes you know you do the whole dots, all that stuff, the CGI. Um, but it also blows me away when they just they just videotape you or film you as you as you're doing it, and then the animators get to watch and, and animate to you, which is really cool. It's very neat to see. Yeah. Uh, it's going, you know, I got to be honest. Sometimes it's freaky because there are some things that I've done that I'll see it and I'll see my my, my reaction. It doesn't look like me. Yeah. But when it's done really well, it doesn't even sound like me. Although I know I was there, I did that voice. Yeah. I knew it came from here, but somehow, it, because it's animated so well, it, I, it, it's not me. Do you, do you know what I'm saying? No, it doesn't no, even sound like yeah. me. It's like, wow. I've heard that from uh, different actors as well. The ones who say that they, you say, oh, well, actors can't look at lots of your own movies and stuff like that. And, like, well, I don't mind because when I'm watching, I'm not watching myself. I'm watching that character. Yeah. And there are times where I forget that's me, and I'll be like, wow, that's, that's a terrible, that's a horrible performance. And I'm like, oh, shit, that's me. You know? Right, exactly. It's like, <laughs> oh, man. Don't say that out loud. They hire this there guy. There goes the Oscar for again. <laughs> so, um, yeah, no, that's, I get, I get that, yeah. 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 Some of the, sometimes I, you know, I do a lot of video games as well. Yeah. And Metal Gear Solid is one where it's like, wow. I'll listen to him. I, you know, a lot of it's on codec. Yeah. And whatnot, but still, it's like, wow, that's. I like that guy. That guy's cool. But that, that was me. It's yeah. Like, oh. Is is that one of the ones you probably get the most like requests for to say? Uh, yeah. These kind of stuff. As far as video games. Yeah. Yeah, Metal Gear, um, Fallout Three. Yeah. I did like eighteen or nineteen voices on it. Uh, but Metal Gear is, is still the big one. Skyrim gets a lot because um, they do three characters in Skyrim. Yeah. The, is real. I, I tell people the cons. They got to go on YouTube and check out this one thing. I do three characters on Skyrim. One is a character called Feldir who helps you kill the dragon, Chaldun. Then I play a character called um, who's a stormcloak, who's a uh, Galmar Stonefist, and he talks like this. He's loud throughout everything he says. Is loud. And I remember asking the director, "Do you really want me to yell?" Every yes, because he's a he's a he's a he's a warrior. There's a big bear cape and everything. And I look very cool. And then the other one is a character called Septimus. Septimus Cygnus. And Septimus is an old mage, and he's a guy that gives you information. And he's he speaks in riddles. And he, he's one of these guys that said, Oh, you know the Elder Scrolls? <laughs> All this weird stuff. Well, someone has gone on 
and they, they sampled all of Septimus's lines, okay? And whoever did it is really good. And what he does is he's got all my lines, and then he called libraries. It's called Septimus Prank Calls. Yeah. And Septimus calls libraries. <laughs> and the poor librarian will say, hello, Cleveland Public Library. And you hear my voice say, do you know the Elder Scrolls? <laughs> and the guy said, beg your pardon? The Elder Scrolls? So, no. no. I, what, what's that? And then my character said, it's just a book. <laughs> And then the, the poor person's like, I don't understand. And they, no, we don't have that. No, they'll go away and they'll come back. And say, we don't have that. And then my, my voice will say, but my master told me you. So it's all this stuff. So I'm being a real dick. And I have no idea. It's, it's like I'm innocent. Honest I am. You know? the, the, the guy is really good. So it's uh, Septimus Prank Calls. It's very funny. Yeah, that yeah. awesome. I don't know who did it, but it's good. There's something we can do that. There's another one called Paul Eiding Being a Dick. <laughs> They've taken lots of scenes from Metal Gear, you know, Campbell, and they're just all these scenes where he's being a jerk to somebody. It's like, oh, and they're, they're like five different episodes. Wow. You know, it's like, you know, Paul Eiding Being a Dick, number one, Paul Eiding Being a Dick, number two. It's like, cool. It's but, but it's all me. fun. It's, but, yeah, but it's all fun. So the internet can share dick. Yeah, I'm going to dick on the internet. <laughs> so, uh, Stephen was right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, you can tell but I, you I embrace it. I embrace it. <laughs> Fair it's enough. Like, hey, it's all Fair good. Um, now, you started off doing uh, radio. Like, well, actually, before that, it was just your, you were doing live action acting first before you started doing yeah. voice work. Uh, people ask me how I became a voice <laughs> actor. It's like... I still don't consider myself, even though for the last eight, nine years, the bulk of it has been voiceover work, which I love. Um, and I, but I've done voice work from the beginning, early on in my career, when I, was, I started out doing improv, um, like Second City and that type of improv. And, um, and someone who worked in the company had a straight job during the day, writing for, I think it was 3M. Minnesota Mining and Manufacturing, Scotch Tape. Yeah. And they needed somebody to do some, uh, some voice work. So I, he asked me if I would be willing to do it. And I said, absolutely. Made extra money. And then I moved to Los Angeles. Did a lot of stage work. And this is in, all in Minneapolis, Minnesota. A lot of stage work there, um, which is my first love, because that's where I started. And that's, I always, I have to do at least one play every year. Have to it just you know it's like going back to the well and filling yourself up. Is that immediacy for the audience? Or? There's nothing like working with a live audience because that moment <coughs> in time happens only once. That interaction between the audience and you never is duplicated, whether it's good or bad, it never happens again. So it's like that excitement, and you you get that immediate response. If they like you, you know. They don't like you, you know. You know, it's not like, not like waiting for the reviews to come out. Um, and then I moved to Los Angeles um, and did the same thing. Did a lot of TV film. Um, had a couple of series uh, that I worked on, you know, recurred on a couple of series. I just did a, um, uh, what was it, um, Grey's Anatomy, nice little guest star on Grey's Anatomy. I did a, a recently I did a, um, House of Lies, where I get to flip off Don Cheadle. It's really nice. Uh, <laughs> uh, so I still do all that, and I still do, do stage. Um, so I'm, I don't consider myself a true voice actor. Okay. Uh, I consider myself an actor who is really lucky to do voice acting, because I can be anybody. And I'm sure you've heard that before. Um, kind of, but slightly different. But I guess my question on that would be, do you if you, like you said, a real voice actor, would you say that there's a sort of a stigma then for to, to quote unquote real voice actors say you should never do live? Is there oh, any no. separation or anything, or is it just it's still that community of you know? No, it's it, it, it's the thing I love about voice acting is there is less competition or feeling of competition with voice actors than on camera, because with voice acting, if you get part, it's because of your talent. It's not because of how you look. How tall you are, how short, how fat, how skinny, how old, how young. Doesn't matter. You know that 
you got the part because of your talent and because you're fun to work with. So when you're working with people or even on auditions with, with other voice actors, there's, I've always found more camaraderie. Okay. You know, because you know, you may be competing with someone, but you know you're gonna get what you should have. You're not gonna be limited by, uh, by your appearance. So, you know, there's, we all res we respect each other. So, and when I say that, it's not, I don't think of being a voice actor as, you know, a pejorative, you know, it's like, there are guys who come from radio yeah. and just go straight into voice acting and don't do anything else. For me, that's just not how I came to it. Sure. Uh, and the voice acting is great because I'm only, lim only limited by my talent. You know? And you, the, see if I can get this straight now, the, the play that really set off that was, you were playing three different characters. What was You've done your homework, haven't you? It was a little you? girl, and, and uh, I think you said it was a, like a, it was, it was a time piece. So it was a little girl, a black man servant, and uh, a, so, a military. A cockney soldier. A soldier. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's a play called Cloud Nine, an English play. Sorry. Thank you. Uh, a brilliant piece. And uh, I played an African manservant in uh, colonial um, Africa um, in the 1800s. <laughs> And the, the conceit of the play is that everyone knows it's a white man playing a black man. There's no makeup involved. There's just costume involved. Because he's tr the servant is trying to act like his master. It's, a, it's about sexual roles, how roles are thrust upon people and how we accept what other people uh, place on us. There are male roles. Certain male roles are played by females. Female roles were played by males, and I was the ugliest five-year-old girl, I think, ever. Ever, I had the little, you know, pigtails and uh, ruffled panties and Mary Jane shoes with ruffled socks. I was hideous. It's the worst, the worst drag queen. Yeah, you know, Stripped, yeah. Five year, yeah, a five-year-old girl. Five -year -old. Yeah, and uh, Gordon Hunt, who was the uh, casting director and director at Hanna Barbera, came and saw the show liked my acting and uh, asked my agent to send me in for a general audition. I went in and I read like 10 or 12 different type of uh, characters from wizards to trolls to really dumb guys, you know, and uh, different ages and started calling me in. So from that I did the Smurfs and the GoBots and Johnny Quest when it came back. I got to do the Jetsons. I got to work with people that I grew up listening yeah, to. Be, it was like amazing. so yeah. cool. Yeah, I, when I did the Jetsons, I played a Jane Jetson's boyfriend from high school who had been like a nerd in high school, but then became like a, a what's his name, um, a Vegas yeah. singer, you know? Hey, you're beautiful. One of those kind of guys. Yeah. Um, and worked with Dawes Butler in a couple of different things. And Dawes Butler was in his 70s still playing Elroy, who was an eight-year-old boy. That's crazy. And when that happened, it's like, oh, man, yeah. You okay. can literally do anything. At that you could do anything. If you have the talent. The, the quote I heard from the, the director who saw that play was that it wasn't that, like, it was, I think it was referring to the, the little girl, it wasn't that it was the best little girl you'd ever seen, but the commitment and conviction that you put into it yeah. was enough to know that you were going to be able to do anything that I wanted to. Right. It was that kind of mentality. And it seems, especially from a voice actor perspective. That yeah, so many times you hear people say, well, you know, I, I want to be a voice actor. Because people say, I've got a good voice, or I can do funny voices. That's great, but that's not what it's about. I always tell people, if, you're going, if you want to be a voice actor, you know, and take an acting class. Because it's not just about the voice. It's about making a human, or making a character live when they can't see you. You've got, it's all got to be there. You've got to know how to work a microphone. You've got to know how to, to bring everything out. And the big word is commitment. Yeah. Look, years ago, I was one of the original Transformers. 30 years ago, yeah. we started. It's our 30th anniversary. I played a character called Perceptor, who was the most intelligent of the Autobots. Um, he's an English kid. It was like a knockoff of C-3PO, you know. Um, and uh, he said things like, Castor evaluation of Decepticon capability indicates a distinct tactical deficiency. In other words, we're outnumbered. So he was very verbose. But I remember a day when uh, we all had to play uh, Insecticons. 
There's a scene in the movie uh, where uh, the movie had killed uh, Orson Welles, by the way, uh, the, the first Transformers movie. Yeah. There's a scene where we all had to play Insecticons, eating metal and, uh, and brick off of a building, destroying a building. And there were eight of us in the room at the same time, which was great. So we were all in the room. And at, so we're all eating, okay? And everybody had a different style of eating. You're not standing behind the microphone making noise like, hum, 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 hum. Everybody, one guy was doing, rah, 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 ha, ha, ha. Somebody else was, hum, hum, and all the hands are moving, the bodies are moving, and at one point, there were two or three of us who looked around and we saw each other, what we were doing, and the commitment that we had, but how ridiculous we all looked. And we just cracked up, and we lost it for a long time before we could get it back together again. Because it's like, we're grown men. And we're making, we are so into it, we became those insects, by golly. But we were getting paid. To act like idiots. It was, it was like, okay, all of it happened at once. Number one, we, yeah, we're committed, we're committed actors, and all of us were actors. Yeah. Um, but the realization that they're paying us to do these things, it's like, man, this is cool. <laughs> it must be kind of interesting, you, I mean, especially for things like video games, where, yeah, you have these great speeches, but you're also sitting there and doing you know, like two days of grunts and, and, and growls and like, you know, just uh, coffee, whatever it may be, and to think, you know, okay, I'm getting paid to spend th the next three hours going, or make the angry noises, you know, like that kind of thing. Listen, I died in, uh, I, play, I did all three uh, God of Wars, yeah. and one of them I was um, Zeus, the grave digger Zeus, and then another one I was Theseus, I don't remember if I did in the third, but in, uh, when I was playing Theseus, I had to be killed by having my head Smash! They, there's like a 30 foot, 30 foot metal door that you know he you know slams on Theseus's head, and they said, "Okay, we're going to slam the door again, and again." So I had to go oh, ah, over and over and over again, and I said, "You know what? I think I'd probably be gone by the first or second slam of that door on my head." They said, "No, you're Theseus, man. It's going to take a while." <laughs> so I had to do it over and over and over again. Uh, a, a little side note. There used to be a, a, the rule for the union when we were doing uh, G.I. Joe and the Transformers is that it was an eight-hour day. They could have you in the studio screaming and yelling and you know, grunting and whatnot for eight hours. Those shows changed the rule because after you did that, you, know, you couldn't work. If you're screaming for eight hours, you're not working for the next day, probably the day after that. Uh, so it really, it really you know, screwed you up. Now, granted, we're not you know, digging ditches, but still, you know, for a voice actor, or any actor, you need your voice. So they changed the rules after those shows. And so now they can have you for four hours, you know, doing that sort of thing, screaming yeah. and, and grunting. It's still a lot of time to be screaming. It's a lot. Yeah, especially some of those voices, I mean, you read you're doing heavy constriction, muscular yeah. constriction, stuff like that. So it's still going to be pretty cruel for straight up. Yeah, and, I, and luckily, uh, I get to do all the really big, heavy voices, yeah. you know. So it's like, oh, great. You know, thank you, thank you. I get to yell. Um, but the really good directors and the good companies, Blind Light, Insomniac Games, all those guys, they really, they try and protect you. They save all the screaming to the very end of the session. There have been those times when, I remember going in for a director one, I, I don't remember what the game was, uh, and I wouldn't say if I, if I did, but this guy said, okay, we're going to do um, uh, three sets of three, and then we'll do uh, three more sets of three, and then we'll do another three sets of three. And we were talking about this the other night, and we said, why? Three sets of three would be, okay, we're going to have, the three would be a short screen, a middle length screen, and a longer screen. Okay, so you <coughs> and then, I don't want to, then a longer one. Yeah. Okay, we do those, and then we do a bunch of other things, and then we go back and do all, all, all over again. Right. It's like, well, why? Yeah. If, you got, you, if you don't have what you want, I'm happy to you know, do it more and more and more. Yeah. But if, let's not just assume that we need 
nine screens on each one of them uh, because I have to work tomorrow. You know? Well, that, it kind of seems like it makes sense if you're going to do the long screen from, in, I'm not obviously a layman, but I would do the long screen first and then kind of show, it seems like from local perspective it would make it easier. Oh, you think? Logistically, you know, get makes three sense good to me. long ones and then three mediums, and by the time you're really raspy, the quick ones would be. Fine. Exactly. Yeah. Um, no. But well, this guy, I don't no. get paid. Yeah, I don't know if he had done many of them, many games. Um, but I think he learned really quickly from actors who, who do it regularly. You know, you gotta, you gotta protect us a little bit. You know, you want to give people what they want, but you also have to be protected. This is talking about giving people what they want. I did a game where I play this character called Galley. Oh, shoot, Galley Vanish, Galley Banish something. I don't know what it is, but. It, again, I got a, a posting on Facebook uh, from a fan. He said, oh, Paul, you've, you've got to go on YouTube and check out this review of your game. These two guys reviewed different games, and they, he said, it's 48 minutes long. They play the game, and they review the game. So I went on, because uh, I do it. It's like, well, you know, for me, I'm nothing without the fans. Mm -hmm. Nothing. You know, who cares about any of us if we don't have people who like our work? And, and listen to our work. So I went on, and it's the funniest review I've ever seen. They, these guys are brilliant. They're so freaking funny. I, I just laughed through the whole thing. And there's one point where Mike, it was one of those things that was directed over the top. Mm. So my character, and I'm not, I'm not exaggerating, my character is, I, and I was lead. And I fight everybody. And there's, sometimes there's, there's a, little, a guy who looks like a little kid. There's a girl that I fight. And my character is one of these God, I, they're going to see this. The people who made the game. They're going. I'll never be working for them again. Um, uh, but we can edit it if you want. But I'll nah, I don't care. It's out there. Uh, <laughs> I did what they wanted. Yeah, yeah. So my character is. It was basically. How about you? Oh, you think you can fight me? You're just a little boy. <laughs> it's that kind of thing. Well, these guys reviewed it and they said, "Oh my God, Colonel Campbell, I feel so bad for you." You know, Perceptor's rolling over in his grave, you know, with the what, you know, what, what you're doing. And so I just went on, I said, an actor's job is to, is to give the director what they ask for. You know, you do your job. And sometimes the director makes you look good, and sometimes you look silly. That's the same thing with on camera. You know, you know, a director, an editor can make you look really good or really stupid, you know. And sometimes you can make yourself look stupid, too. I've done that, my share of that. Have you ever had those moments where, so I know from an actor perspective, they say like backstory is really important to, to get the, the essence of the character and the thing. Um, but with vocal work a lot of times, especially when you come in, you come in to do your, your pitch or you know, your audition for it, right. you, they don't give you a lot of information, if any at all. They say, this is the general character. What have you got? Thing. I know uh, things like Disney and Pixar are very notorious for that kind of thing, uh, especially with the lead actors. When you have something like that, do you feel the need, in personally, to come up with a backstory to help you develop the character, or you just sort of go with your, your gut and how you feel? It, it, you know, it, 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 that's a good, very good question because sometimes it's it's both. Yeah, <laughs> sometimes it, uh, there are those times when I, if I have a day, if I get you know get an email saying this is what you're auditioning for tomorrow. Um, there are times when that's what I, I, I gotta do a backstory. I've gotta I make something up, whether it's right or wrong, to have an attitude, to have a reason to do what I'm doing, to have a reason to say what I'm saying. Other times, if they give you a picture, then you just go, you know, okay, well, this looks like a good, does he have an underbite? Does he have an overbite? You know, what's the face look, the construction of the face look like? Is, the, is there, are there, you know, are the veins popping out in his throat? That sort of thing, you know, you, you go with what, what, what you can. There are those times, though, and I'm, I swear any actor will tell you this is true, I've had a page, page and a half of backstory on the character. You know, where he's from, how, who his, his uh, children were, how he treated his mother, uh, what area of the country, you know, he used to be a, um, a Union uh, uh, soldier, but now he's something else, blah, blah, all this stuff, okay? And then the lines are, not today, my friend. And that's it. But you get, you get all this backstory for one line. And then they'll cast you off that one line. 
it's like so it's not empty. You're getting something out of that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> now with well with uh, uh, Grandpa Max on Ben Ten, yes, which I do. When I got that, they just had a picture of the guy, and they said we wanted him folksy, kind of folksy. So when I first read it, I, I read it and there was uh, and they liked me. But then when I got into the session, the very first time we, we recorded the show, they said, well, we, uh, they said, well, make him a little more folksy. So I, had, I gave him just a little bit of a twang. Yeah. You know, Ben Tan. Well, we, we shot three episodes. And they decided, no, that's not what you want. So I thought I was going to be replaced. So the fourth episode, they brought me in by myself. And they said, Paul, we're not happy with this. It's like, OK, well, what do we want? He said, well, try this and try that and try the other thing. And finally, we got rid of the the little twang all together. So then it was just Ben, you know, come on, Ben. You know, so, the, but it was scary because I said, oh God, I know we've got a series here. We started in 2006 and still going. Um, although I did have to re-audition for it. Really? Was I it have to, for the... No, what happens is they changed the, all the directors, we changed directors three times, we changed writing teams and producers three times, and when they brought the second series, the second group in, they had everybody re-audition because Ben was now going to be five years older. So they have a new Ben, new Gwen, and they had me re-audition. And at first, uh, they said, well, it's five years, Grandpa's not five years older, so maybe he's not as tough as he was. He'll make a little bit of air in his voice. So it was, okay, Ben, how you doing? You know that. He said, no, no maybe, he's, maybe he's just more gravel. So, okay, Ben, how you doing? He said, well, you know what? It's only five years, and adult's voice doesn't change that much in five years. So we just ended up with the same same character. So I'm the only I'm the only guy who's been there from the very beginning. Everyone else has changed, but Grandpa Max is the only one that's stayed. So it continues. You have the all right. So next time he's been drinking a lot and smoking <laughs> cigars. So no, there have been other suggestions about what Grandpa's been up to. You know. <laughs> I won't go into them because they're all inappropriate. Yeah. <laughs> Gambling away in Vegas, hoarding, and conversing. No, his, his wife, his she's wife still, was still, an alien. That's oh, that's true. So you know, he's doing the Captain Kirk thing. Right? Kind of a lizard yeah. lady sort that's of thing. Right. It's like, okay, what's really been going on? That's a very interesting show because there aren't, for from an adult perspective, there aren't that many cartoons that are actually intelligent. Mm -hmm. Not there, most of them are, seem to be much more dumbed down than when we when the cartoons that we grew yeah. up. Yeah, so those were very much children kid cartoons that had these great adult underlines so as you grow up you're watching them and you're going I didn't get that I didn't get that and those that Ben 10 is one of those that still has that bit of an edge to it we try there's still uh, enough moments where I can sit there and go that's really clever if I were a kid I would never get that at all but, yeah uh, good yeah so it yeah. is there and I think there's maybe two or three out there that I've, I've actually watched with them that's that are geared toward children that still have an intelligence about them yeah so that's really nice to see I really like, uh, especially this new uh, version of the show, Omniverse. And from a, a selfish actor uh, side, I, I really like it because I get to do more than one character. I'm Grandpa Max. I'm a character called Blue, Blue Kitch, who's a little guy. He's one of the Galvins. The Galvin race is the most intelligent race in the universe, but he's one of the dumbest of the Galvins. So, you know, so I get to do him, and I get to do, you know, you know, three, four other characters, which is like cool. That's just pretty sweet. Because you're not stuck in doing just one voice. And I mean, I imagine, not just from a monetary perspective, but doing the same thing over and over, the same character, the, the content may be different, but you still kind of, it would be nice to be able to mix it up and change it up. So yeah, I've got, a, I have a friend uh, <coughs> who did a show years ago, who works, still works on, this is on camera, but he was like uh, a cop, but he was like not the lead. He was the third, so his basically, you know, I didn't understand it at the time because he had a series. He was on every week. His name is Carl Lumley, a great actor. And he did a show called Cagney and Lacey. Yeah. And he said, he left the show at one point because he said, I'm tired of saying, phone for you, Cagney. Yeah. Phone for you, Lacey. You know, and then and just sitting around. Getting that check, making a lot of money, but it's not that satisfying. We don't do it just, you don't do things for, just for the money. Some things you do. Some things, you, okay, you know, uh, I did a movie with Pamela Anderson for the money. 
you know, not that not, nothing against her, but it was just not a great piece. Yeah. But you do it for money, or you do it you know, whatever. But most of the time, you do things because you want to. You want to have an effect. Yeah. You, you want to, you know, it's because it's fun too, and we're really lucky, and we know it. It's quite interesting. The, the few people I know that have done voiceover work, and you, they're at parties or at a social gathering, and I find it really intriguing watching two of them go, two or more, because invariably, as alcohol is introduced, they end up in a character voice, having discussions or arguments in these characters. And I've seen the craziest conversations I've ever had with one person who apparently slipped away and had a, uh, we'll say, an herbal remedy, right. and another person who had been drinking heavily throughout the night, and watching cartoon characters of my childhood have philosophical conversations yeah. in fairly inebriated states. I find that to be the most hysterical thing I've ever seen in my life. Well, you, you're lucky you weren't with us last night. <laughs> so Rigby, me, and Mario and Luigi were out. So there were times when I was Preceptor, there was times I was uh, Colonel Campbell, uh, yeah, woohoo! And then there are times when we're all doing Charles uh, Martinet. You know, it's like, yeah, it's it gets silly. <coughs> Obviously, it's not the uh, you don't want to go into a bar and pick up a, a girl as Mario. Although that may work in in, in certain instances, but uh, I mean, yeah, I'd be, I'd be, the girl would be suspect. It'd be, yeah, it'd be, it'd be, if you could pick up a girl doing Mario. I think. Uh, well, yeah, okay, let's, might let's, be let's not go there, yeah. Be, yeah, yeah, don't go there. No, no, don't go there. No. <laughs> I know. <you're laughs> I, I, I was thinking someone my age who played the game, but that can be taken a whole different way, so yeah, we'll, we'll avoid that one. Moving on. Yeah. Um, yeah. Now, I could do it better because, you know, with, with uh, somebody like, you know, Colonel Campbell. Yeah. It's different, you know. he's, he's smooth. Uh, yeah, and he's six foot two. Yeah, I'm six two on the inside. Do you, when you're doing a voice like that, do you feel like that, like... Do you, I mean, you can maybe be doing Absolutely. a mirror, but do you feel like, like you could literally take on the world like that when you do Absolutely, it? you got to. Really? Oh, yeah. That, that's the conviction. I'm that guy. When I'm Galmar Stonefist, when I'm that loud guy wearing the, the bear head and the yeah. bear cape down his back, absolutely. And when I'm, unfortunately, when I'm, you know, Septimus, I'm, I, all of a sudden you become small and wiry, you know? Um, oh, yeah. It's fun playing wizards. That's very. That's really cool. Although my wife will tell you that I, I play a better dumb guy <laughs> because I become that. Oh yeah. Okay. Well, whatever you say is fine. <laughs> you know. Is there one that you? Well, first of all, is there one that you prefer? I know the actors say they're all like my children, the characters. But is there one that you really enjoy doing more than others? Oh, wow. That you just kind of pluck out when someone says, "Oh, do a voice, do a voice," which invariably someone always does. Oh yeah. You always. just do a voice. Is there one that you go to <laughs> voice? Uh, well. There was, a, there was a, a cartoon I did years ago called um, The Toxic Crusaders. Yes. It was only on for uh, a season. But I loved that show just because it was trauma and it was so bizarre and so over the top. And every show, at, <laughs> twice in every show, somebody, you know, one of us had to say, oh, uh, we're superhuman. Let's see, we're hideously deformed creatures of superhuman size and strength. And I played a character called No Zone. No Zone was a guy who was a, t a Chuck Yeager type test pilot who flew through a hole in the ozone, crashed into a vat of radi radioactive pepper, and became partially fused with his airplane. Sure. So I had one leg that was a wheel, and I had a huge schnoz. And my superpower was sneezing. And I could sneeze down a frickin' forest. And, and so my favorite was no zone. And so when, when at con, somebody will, and invariably, somebody will remember that show. Yeah. So I'll do the, we're hideously deformed creatures of superhuman size and strength. <laughs> and so I would do that. That was a short sneeze. Uh, <laughs> uh, and I, love, I just love that character because he was so stupid, just so over the top. And for me, it was really cool because at, at uh, San Diego Comic Con last, uh, this year, last year, I'm, I'm tooling around the place where we finished our panel for Ben 10, and there's a trauma booth. And there is, oh God, what's his name? Who, the head of trauma. Oh my God, it's just out of my head. Uh, head of trauma. Who created the whole thing. He's, he's like this tall now, yeah. in his 70s or 80s, 
As soon as I leave, I'll remember. Okay. And I, we'll I, edit it back in. If you just yeah. run in and say it, we'll right. put there it you in. go. Yeah. And I, I, uh, and so I, I met him because I, I hadn't seen him since we did this thing back in, well, I guess it was 1990? Yeah. Uh, 89 or 90. And uh, I said, yeah, I did, I did the cartoon series. He said, oh, you ruined my career. <laughs> well done. It's like, oh. And then he gave me some um, vintage cards from the, uh, from the cartoon show. From uh, from back in the I think it was ninety or ninety one. Yeah, it was yeah. the end that split between these and this. I actually remember that show. Oh really? I do. I, <laughs> as, as you were, I'm like, it sounds familiar. And you're describing the the with the wheel. It's like, oh dear lord, I do remember that. Oh man. Yeah. That it was like a crazy acid trip. Like, I can imagine the person like, just do something, just anything, just throw it in there, and the guy is just drawing the thing out. So he's like, all right, that's fine. We we don't have a lot of time. Just go with it, you know. Yeah. So. Did you get a still for that before you came up with the voice? Oh yeah, they showed me a picture of it. So what was your reaction when you saw that picture? Oh, I, uh, no, you know, it's gotta be nose. Yeah. Gotta be nose, you know, it's gotta be <laughs> So I had to, yeah, I did. And unfortunately, I have to make that face to do that character. Real quickly, yep. about, um, about that one. Uh, Susan Blue directed that, that show. She is the, she's the last director on Ben 10. And I reminded her of a story. When I went into audition, I auditioned for two characters, that character and this little toady character, um, sidekick of the bad guy, Roger Bumpus played. And I did this little character, she said he's kind of a weasley little guy, kind of, you know, maybe had lost a lot of um, uh, um, you know, brain cells due to his substance abuse. So I did this character based on an actor from the uh, 70s and 80s, okay? little actor with three names. And I did the voice. He, he played the sidekick in um, Bonnie and Clyde, and I, I forgot his name. It, so I did this voice, you know, his voice. And I go in, I go in, I, I, I do the audition, and Susan says, uh, who, is that, who is that voice you're doing? And I told her, I said, well, I'm, I'm trying to do this guy. She said, well, he's funnier than hell. That's great. So I leave. I get to the first session, knowing that I got cast as No Zone, I get there, and the guy cast as that other character is the guy whose voice I did. Michael J. Pollard. Michael J. Pollard, I did his, uh, my uh, impression of him, and he ends up doing the, uh, what is this? Oh, yeah, yeah, Michael J. Pollard. Yeah, that, that was a great cast. I forgot that Hal Real. Oh, it's all right. Yeah, yeah. Roger Bumpus, Susan Blue, Craig, Greg Berger, Ed Gilbert. God bless him. John Mariano, Chuck McCann, Susan Seidel, Kath Susie. Yeah, Michael J. Pollard, Lloyd Kaufman. That's it. Lloyd, thank you so much. He's crazy. He's I, insane. I've met him three times, and every time, first he remembered me, which is obscene at, at, at his age, even going. Yeah, you know, this all the people you meet, and he's just truly. I believe he is actually truly nuts. Yeah. But in a wonderfully enduring, amazing way. Yeah, and, and he's, he's got this energy about yeah, it. Yeah. You know, there's this little life force that travels with him. Yeah. Anyway, so yeah, yeah that, was, that was great fun. We uh, have nothing. This is. I'm making all this shit up. None of this is actually, true. <laughs> well, actually, it's we'll, all bullshit. We'll spin off on that then. <laughs> if it, if it, well, speaking of bullshit, um, we'll see if you remember the bullshit that uh -oh. you spun already. So no, one of the things we like to do is that we look on the internet for bizarre rumors about people. And Are there Leo's, rumors about me? Kind of, but you've kind of ruined it for us because you've told all this stuff already. Oh, God. Um, but I am a, alive. It, it is, alive. There is a website that says, is this celebrity dead? And people vote whether they think they're dead based on rumors they've heard. And okay, you're not, still alive, but the other two we interviewed are dead. Okay, so, it's I not that they wish you were dead. No, it's just they, okay, we believe good. this person's actually dead. I don't. It's <laughs> freaking random, but um, the three rumors that we found about you, and basically... Just to throw them out, and normally I would say you say true, false, or passive, it's too personal. However, two of them you've already told us were true. Which ones? Um, the first one was that your, your true love of everything is live performance. Yeah. Um, and <laughs> that you get your big break playing the little girl on the shoulder. And, and that, so that was, uh, that was like the sort of catalyst moving into the Those are really horrible rumors. Ooh. Well, because there's yeah. nothing out there that actually substantiated it. People were just like, I think this is what I heard. And it, you see it on multiple things. The right. one that got me, though, and based on your history, I don't think there's a lick of proof to this, but I had to ask because it popped up in about, I think this one was four different forums that people, for fans, is that you did a stint 
dubbing background voices for foreign porn films? I did one. I did one. <laughs> really? Yeah. yeah, yeah I, oh, and, I, oh. I, I had, and I barely remembered it, but, but somebody was talking about <laughs> listening. Somebody was talking about two old people made their living. Uh, um, they walked in on to a session, and there were these two old people going, hmm, ah, ah, oh. You know, they said they were doing porn movies. I did one thing, and I, I, I got hired to do the job. This is when I first moved to L.A. So I said, we've got this little uh, ADR thing to do. They said, you know, you, you want to, I had never done ADR at that point, you know. So I, I, I said, okay, cool. So I went in, and we did, you know, I, and I said, what do we, oh, really? Is that, that's what we're doing? And it really wasn't quite, it was more soft core porn. But there was still the, oh, oh yeah, oh, yeah, oh. So the rumor is false because it wasn't background. It was it was character. It was main character. Oh, I, I had a character. Yeah, it nice. wasn't like oh, you know. Full, did you have? Did you I create didn't a background back for that stuff? It's like you know. <laughs> did you create guys, a backstory? Oh, do it to her. Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. I don't understand what. I I just I just it's like the, group sex or something. I, yeah. Or it's like you know people in a cafe while someone's going at it on the counter. It's like I'll have a latte. Like I have no idea where. It's oh, I've done a lot of that, but stuff. not not for porn. Yeah. No. Um, no. <laughs> so did you create a backstory for those characters or did you just let it go? And I was let it go, baby. <laughs> Sense memory. Sense memory. That's what it was. I'm like, surprised and wonderfully delighted that that one was true. <laughs> but thought, it was only one. Of all the ones I looked out for today, that was the most random one I could find. I thought, that's, there's and like, no way that's real. I had forgotten all about it. And it, it, I don't remember who was it who, who told me to come <laughs> in and do the thing. I, I don't remember who it was. It, I, I don't even know if it was... A union may have been a special project, you know, where they said, you know, you know, you, come on in, we got some voiceover stuff for you to do. It's like, okay, you get there and you it said, okay, well, here's the deal. It, oh God, it's coming back to me. It said, here's the deal. It's it's not like a well-known uh, movie, so it's it's just and it's just a few things here and there. So it wasn't like a long session either. It wasn't like a long <laughs> session. It was just a long session. You know, it was it was one of those deals. It's like you're an actor, you you. You know, you're you're asked to do it, but, um, and those things. It's embarrassing. When, not embarrassing, but you feel bad when you do uh, an ADR session. My, my first real ADR session was for Demolition Man. I got called in to um, replace the voice of a young man who was playing a a soldier. Uh, he was a, a pilot, a marine pilot. He's driving, flying uh, a Stallone into the city. And trying to decide where to land and whatnot. And the guy looked great. He's this big, strapping young man. And but but his voice was, where would you like to land, sir? He said, We need to make him tougher. So they had me go in and I did one of those kind of voices. Where do you want me to land, sir? Yes, sir. Right on. It was that that sort of thing. And I just felt horrible. Because you know damn well that kid is telling mom and all the folks back home, I'm in a movie with Stallone! Wait till you see it. Wow, I'm really good. And then you hear this voice come out of him. Now, either the, either the mother's going to say, Wow, son, you're amazing. <laughs> you changed your voice and everything. Or they're all going to look at him and just feel horrible for him. I'm guessing she said, That was amazing. I can't believe oh, it. Yeah. And, he, and he said, Yeah, that was really good. I'm like, Yeah, the actor in yeah you like that, Mom? Just, I sound like I had balls, didn't I? It's like, Cool. It's like, Woo. Awesome. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> no, that's, that's good. That's not at all where I thought we were going to go with that, which makes it even more Oh, fun. good, good, yeah. Um, all right. Thank cool. you so much. My pleasure. It was a blast. My pleasure. I wanted to say something so badly when Stephen was talking, man. Oh, God. <laughs> There's everything I can do to keep my mouth shut. I love that guy.